So we've come this far, and that's actually not a bad kind of flat graphic. It's just missing a few components needed to be recognizable. So what are the main components? Well, the other eye and then the hat. Now, if I wanted to save time and not do that little professorial thing that came from my, my screen grab from the program, I could very simply, because it's such a useful skill, just select these layers that made up the eye and then Command-J duplicate them and then edit free transform, right-click, flick, flip horizontally and then just move them all over to the other side. And I get instant eye. So duplicating from elements you already have, very, very helpful. But what I'm going to do is actually take this larger circle and I'm going to duplicate that, Command-J, and then Option-Command-T for free transform, Option-Scale it bigger, and I'm going to make it this outside color, which is like this darker gray. And if I need to, I can actually steal that from the original. So what I'm going to do is turn on my background one. Get this new copy and double click within its layer preview window and then just click right on that metal. There we go. But I want to move it above. So command right bracket. I want to move it above the nose and then I need the eye pieces to also be above. Just for now. Now I need this little knob at the side of the the thing. <laughs> and so I'm just going to make another duplicate, Command-J, and then Option-Command-T, and then shrink it down while holding Shift, or actually not holding Shift because I want to lock it, into this proportion. Shrink it down so its corners line up right with it, just like so. Okay, next, I want the uh, other eye shape that's in there that I copied over. There it is. I'm going to move that up. There we go. And now what shapes do I have? I have all these shapes. So what's missing? It's what looks like the glass. And I'm just going to do this in kind of a simple way. I'm going to take the same circle, duplicate it, move it up on top of everything, and I'm going to make it that pale blue color. A lot like what you see here. Just like that. And I can spend, waste a whole lot of time trying to get that perfect rectangle. But the better way is to just make a rectangle flat across, make it white, rotate it with free transform, but let it not line up perfectly with the edges, but it needs to overlap the edges, like so. And then what I'm going to do is use a custom shape. Because you're allowed to use all of these except lines. So if I go to custom shape, it's actually not a star. It's whatever shape you select from this menu. And Photo P is really good about having a lot of custom shapes. So what I need is a custom shape that has an opening in it of a circle. That would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. B? 
because this circle isn't a donut. It's a full circle. And I'd have to cut out a vector from it, which is something I'm not allowing you to do yet. Does that make sense? So what I could do is try to warp those edges to match that curve, but that's going to be a big headache. So instead, you can see all, and it's my excuse to show you these custom options. <laughs> Some of them are pretty complicated, but I want something pretty simple. So I can try this one. Then I draw this, hold down shift, get it to be a perfect circle, use my move tool to put it in place. And pick a color and I can use the gray for it, right? And that will give me kind of a hollow. Now, the problem with that is then I want to use warp or transform to try to pinch down the outside while not hurting the inside, which can be tricky, but it's doable. So it's all about kind of manipulating these different tools. and not requiring it to be perfect. Because that's why I want you to embrace these limitations I'm giving you so that when we use a vector program, it's so, it's such a luxury to get to manipulate these vectors on our own. All right, so now I've got that little Oculus. What's nice about doing it that way too is I can select these shapes and actually play with their opacity eventually, right? So that I can kind of come through. But I'm not doing that yet because we're just doing flat graphics for right now. All right, next, the hat. And then I'm done with my flat graphic. Now his hat is actually like this. So maybe I want to bring that in and try to match those basic shapes instead of the cowboy hat. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to bother with the fully opaque one. I'm just going to bring it all the way to the top. I have quite a few layers now, quite a few references. I'm going to take its opacity down to about 30, maybe a little bit higher. And then I'm going to transform it. Option Command T to make it fit with my emoji. So I might need to squeeze it a little bit by holding down shift. Yeah, I think that will work. And now I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space so I can fit that hat in. So I'm gonna increase my canvas size. Remember, you can always go bigger, but we can't go smaller than eight by 10 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and go 14 by 14. There we go, plenty of space. Now I'm going to lock this, and I'm going to build my shapes on top of it. Maybe move it behind. No, it's fine. Okay, so lots of complex shapes here, but mostly they're ovals. Start with the biggest shape first, pick a color for it, kind of a tan, I'm trying to finish this off in roughly five minutes. Use the move tool, move it into place, and then I'm going to duplicate that, command J, option command T, then stretch it smaller, holding down shift, and wider, holding down option and shift, and then I'm going to duplicate that, command J, option command T, and I'm going to hold down shift and bow it up, and now I'm going to change its color to the pink, this is the sash on the hat, it'll be kind of a, a rusty pink, something about there, maybe a little darker. Okay, and now let me turn the sketch off and I'm going to use warp to make that feel like the sash of the hat. So 
right click within it, warp. Pinch it up here. Pinch it down at the edges. I'll pinch it up a little bit more here. Keep it symmetrical. Then hit return, option command T. Just play with scale and option. Get it in there. It's kind of an explorer's hat, right? Nest it in there. Okay. Now my only problem with them is I think this color needs to be a little bit darker, but I can always go back and then darken it up. I think that's nice. And then same thing with this color. I can steal the same one, or I can actually have a slight variation that's a little bit brighter. And then if I want to be really fancy, because it's a fabrics kind of sash on the hat, right? It's got these little dimples at the edge. I can take this shape, duplicate it, shrink it just like I did for the eyeball, but with shift and option, make it a darker color. Yeah, that's nice. And then transform it until it looks like a little wrinkle on that sash. So it needs to go right to the edge. There we go. But maybe squeezed a little. That's not too bad. Okay. So now I've got my guy. Now let's post it. So first, always just command S to save your work. Then you're going to export it as a PNG with all of your raster layers. Just the eyeballs turned off. So it's floating on this flat background. So export as a PNG. And it's going to go to your downloads folder. So move that into your assignment folder or the desktop, whatever works for you. As long as you can organize it, here it is. Here is my folder. Moving it around a lot. And this is what I mark as orange, and that's what's going to go to Canvas. Now this is the first step. This is just my flat graphic. But I'm noticing as it's small, um, like that nose could have a little definition. Certain things could be better. And maybe I can do some optional things to improve it. But first, let's let me make sure I just meet the requirements. Because we're getting close to 2 o'clock and we want to turn something in. So save it as a PNG. So my vector shapes only exported as a PNG. Remember, we don't put our PSD file. Our PSD file, I mark yellow. That's too big for Canvas. That is for working on something. And speaking of too big for Canvas, I want to shrink it so that it fits kind of under my writing. Make it a little bit bigger. Now, because it's a, um, a PNG and I have all this extra space around it, it has that space. But when I open it just with preview on the Mac, it will float on a gray background, right? Because there's no background actually there. And that's how emojis work. Okay, now I have posted it. It's in Canvas. It meets all the requirements. It's the flat shape graphic. And you have to post your flat one so I can see what you did with the vectors. But what if I want to add some gradients? You know, I want to add some flavor. These directions tell you how to do it. You're going to do it with layer styles, layer effects. And if I notice that the nose is a little hard to see, I do it by clicking on the nose and like the tip of the nose and I can give it a cast shadow. I double click on the layer next to the name and I opens up my layer styles and I can give it a drop shadow. And I can change that angle of the drop shadow so it's straight down, right? And I can actually play with the spread of it so it shows up a little bit better and the size of it, as long as it doesn't cut into my other nose. And I can always move it under the other shape too. Now with these, 